Hi, and thanks for logging on to the Daily Dvar Halacha. And here's a brand new Halacha for you. It's for Friday, the 6th day of November. Here we go. We're continuing on now in all kinds of kitchen items and how to use them for meat and dairy and all those different things. If you want to cut bread with a meat knife, um, well, then you're going to have to be very certain to only eat that bread with, uh, with meat foods. If you, again, if you use a meat knife to cut a bread, then don't expect to be able to eat those slices of bread with a dairy meal. That will not be allowed. For those of you who are really smart and know halacha and know the concept of eno ben yomo, which I'll explain right now, sometimes you know, yeah, but this knife hasn't been used in the last 24 hours, so any flavor that's in it is kind of like old and sort of rotten. So can I use a fleshic knife? That hasn't been used in 24 hours or more and use that to cut a slice of bread and then eat that bread with dairy meal? And the answer is no, you can't. We just don't want people using uh, a meat knife to cut bread and then eat that bread with a dairy meal. It's just not allowed. Uh, Post can say in general, all the rabbis say that it's a very good idea to have a special power of knife in the house that you use to cut bread. Call it your bread knife or challah knife, and it's just good to have one of those around and use that always to cut your bread. That's the best way to do it. Uh, <laughs> you're going to laugh at this one, but I did see this in a halacha book. If you sweep, you know, all over your kitchen and things get stuck in the broom and a random piece of something flesha could get stuck in there and something milk could get stuck in that broom too. You do not have to worry about that at all. The fact that the meat and the milk pieces, piece of cheese, piece of meat, are both getting mixed together in that broom, that's not your concern. Do not worry about that at all. Um, I guess it goes without saying that it's a very good idea and a good kosher kitchen should set up separate cabinets for your meat dishes and your dairy dishes. You know, you may be tight on space and want to just put some of the dairy dishes in the meat cabinet, but it's best, if you can, to have a cabinet that's dedicated for your meat dishes and one for your dairy dishes and great idea to label it too. Um, a can opener. You know can openers most often are opening power of cans like corn and green beans or whatever and therefore it's always fine to have a can opener that just opens all of those power of type of containers but if you know that occasionally you're one of those families that will uh, open a can of something that's meat, flasix, there are such things out there, and if you know that your can opener is being used to open canned meat, then you'd have to have a separate can opener special and not use that same can opener for your dairy ones because it's hard to wash a can opener really well and you could get into trouble. Lastly, a chopper that you use around the kitchen to chop up, let's say, meat and onions. If you know that your chopper chops some meat and onions, then you cannot use that chopper. It's treated pretty much like a knife, and you can't use that chopper to then chop uh, like eggs and eat those eggs at a dairy meal because they were they were being used for meat and onions, and that brings out all kinds of meat flavors and uh, you know from the knife and all that good stuff. So don't use that chopper to then chop eggs to be eaten at a dairy meal. Thanks for logging on and log on again after Shabbos for more. Bye bye.